I was recently offered Huion's Canvas Pro 16, the 2.5K model, and asked to take it for a test drive, but I initially declined. The reason being that I'd already reviewed its little brother, the Canvas Pro 13, so I didn't see the point in creating what would have essentially been the same review, with the only differences being the screen size, and you do get an additional configurable button. After discussing it with Huion, I decided to take them up on the offer, but instead of rehashing my previous review, I would make a shorter video, unboxing the device and sharing my thoughts on the larger display. As a sweetener, they also sent their new slim pen for me to test too. If I take a look back at my review of the 13 inch version, this is what I had to say. With the Canvas Pro 13 2.5K, once I got used to not having the touch screen functionality, I found it to be a joy to use. The only thing I would recommend, and I go by this with every pen display I review, is if your budget can stretch to it, I would go for the bigger version for a more comfortable working area. So you see, even then I was recommending that people go for a larger screen size, if they could afford it. Currently the difference in price on the Huion website is the Pro 13 2.5K is £379 and the Pro 16 2.5K is £529, although it is currently on offer for £419. So for just £40 more, you're getting a much needed bump in screen real estate. With this video, we will look at the Canvas Pro 16 2.5K as well as what's inside the box, and then take the device and the slim pen for a spin. However, if you're looking for a more in-depth review, which includes the full setup process and configuration options, I recommend that after you watch this video, you jump over to my Canvas Pro 13 review. It's exactly the same device, just a bit smaller, but everything still applies to the 16. Unboxing. The Canvas Pro 16 box is a wealth of information, both on the front and the back, giving you details on the specifications and installation. As with the 13, the 16 inch model also boasts a QLED display, which utilizes quantum dot technology to give you improved contrast and color range, offering 16.7 million colors and 145% sRGB color gamut. Inside, we first have the device, which feels light and slim. It's only one centimeter thick and weighs just under 1.2 kilograms, making it very portable. Beneath this is the foldable stand, which is a standard generic accessory, which raises the device from the desk to a few specific angles. It's simple to use, but does give you a sturdy support while working. Plus, it's good to see this included in the box. Beneath this we have the rest of the accessories, including a cleaning cloth, so you can maintain a clear display. Next we have the pen, which utilises Huion's Pentech 3.0 technology, offering better stability and precision. It's battery free and gives you over 8000 levels of pressure sensitivity and 60 degrees of tilt support. You are also given a stand for the pen, and inside it are some extra standard and felt nibs. A nice addition is the inclusion of a smudge guard glove too. Included are a wealth of cables. A 3 in 2 cable, which is the main connection between the device and your computer, plus a USB extension cable, USB power cable, and USB-C to USB-C cable too so there are plenty of options available. The Slim Pen In addition to the Canvas Pro 16, Huion also sent me their new Slim Pen to try. Specification wise, this is the same as the main pen which is bundled with the device. It also has two configurable buttons and a rubber grip, but it's thinner, much more like a traditional pen. Almost all digital tablet companies offer this option now, with some devices being bundled with both the standard and slim pens, giving the artist the choice of which to use. Personally, I do prefer the thinner pens, which surprises me, 
as I've used the thicker pens for a long time now, so thought it wouldn't feel the same in my hand. But it has a good weight and is comfortable to work with. I do feel we are missing a three button option though, with the Huion on pens. I'd love to see the standard pen get that extra button, like the Sense Labs pens, and maybe future devices bundled with both options, the standard pen and a slim pen too. When I work, I tend to use a three button stylus for 3D work, but much prefer the slimmer two button pens for more traditional artwork. On a side note, you will also notice that the slim pen and the main pen are both missing that eraser at the end. Personally, I don't miss this because I never use the eraser anyway, but this could be an issue for some artists. The tablet in use. As mentioned in the introduction, this isn't going to be a rehash of my Canvas Pro 13 review, so if you would like to see how the device is set up and explore the configuration options, please refer to that video. Instead, we will have a more general overview of what the 16-inch version is like to use. What I will say is this time around I didn't suffer from any issues with the drivers. Also, depending on the device you're connecting to, you may not need to use the red USB cable. This is used more when connecting to an Android phone or tablet, and you need to boost the power to help increase the screen brightness. Also, with the dual USB-C connector, make sure you connect it the right way around, or the display won't work. It took me a little while to figure this out. Once you're connected with the drivers downloaded and the device and pens configured, it's time to start painting, or sculpting if that's your area of expertise. As with the Canvas Pro 13, the QLED screen is bright and colourful, plus the 2.5K resolution which is 2560 by 1600 pixels is crisp and clean, meaning you aren't working with a pixelated UI. Even though the resolution is the same as a 13 inch version, it's spread over a larger area, so rather than feeling a bit more confined and cramped as you work, the extra few inches really make a difference. Plus, I feel the resolution makes a bit more sense on a screen of this size. The standard line tests were good, with the pen being responsive with no real sense of issues with misalignment or jitter, which means you get smoother, cleaner lines. Again, I did miss the touchscreen input. I'm used to being able to pinch, pan and zoom directly on the screen, but you are given eight buttons on the side which can be configured to perform these actions for you it's just a little bit less interactive and intuitive. Just for comparison, on the 13 inch version, space is at a premium, so you do only get seven buttons, compared to the eight you get here on the 16. Should you invest? As I said in my original review, when buying a display tablet, or any tablet for that matter, bigger is always better. That is, unless you are limited with space or need something portable. When I reviewed the Canvas Pro 13, I enjoyed using it, but I did feel like I was restricted with space, so with the 16, that issue has been resolved. It reminds me very much of working on the Mobile Studio Pro, which was a similar size and something I spent a few years creating on. The screen is arguably better here than with the Wacom, but you do lose the touchscreen support, and as good as the buttons are, I would prefer a dial of some sort to use for adjusting brush sizes or zooming into the canvas. I find them to be a bit more intuitive and precise than a button click. What I will say is if you're considering the Canvas Pro 13, maybe see if you can dig a little deeper into your pockets and invest in the larger sized Canvas Pro 16 instead. You won't be disappointed and will appreciate the extra canvas size. So there we go, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the Ant CGI Community Discord server. That's the best place to reach me, and if I'm not available, there are plenty of other talented people around to help. Remember to help support future content and keep these videos free, hit the thanks button below, visit the Ant CGI store, or join the Ant CGI club. You can also treat me to a coffee at my coffee page. The link is on the screen now and in the description below. Thanks again for watching, this is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.